biochemistry. Biochemistry. Charles Darwin said something very interesting in his writings. He said this, quote, If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous, successive, slight modifications, then my theory would absolutely break down. Well, I guess it's a good thing that nothing like that has ever been found. That's what he said. And you know what? Biochemist Michael Behe of Lehigh University, who I also interviewed for my book, you mean Michael Behe, whose, whose works on irreducible complexity have been refuted and rejected by all scientific institutes? You mean Michael Behe that senses his nine children from going to actual real schools and having them homeschooled, i.e. brainwashed, into intelligent design? You mean Michael Behe, whose own biolog biology department in the Lehigh University published an official statement opposing his own views and against uh, intelligent design? that he interviewed for his book. Notice how he only interviews completely horribly biased people for his book. He only interviews people who agree with his point of view anyway. He never ever interviews people who disagree with him. And you would think that that would make a better case, wouldn't you? Has demonstrated just that through what he calls molecular machines that are irreducibly complex. Everything that's been claimed to be irreducible complex has been proven wrong. Irreducible complexity can evolve. What does he mean by that? Well, he uses a mouse trap as an example. Great, yes. Let's use something that cannot reproduce and is not even alive as an example to disprove evolution. Or as an analogy. A mouse trap, you picture it, has basically five components. It has a base, it has a metal hammer, it has a spring, it has a catch, and it has a metal bar. Okay, with the mousetrap, Professor John H. McDonald has actually um, released something on the net. I, I, I'm going to put a link on the side. Released something on the net which shows how the mousetrap can evolve. Kind of. It's a very good thing. It shows how you just get from a simple wire to a full, seemingly irreducibly complex mousetrap. All of those components must be present and they must be in the right spatial relationship to each other for the mouse trap to work. If any of those components is absent, the trap doesn't catch half as many mice. It doesn't catch any mice, my, any mice, any mouses, mooses, what are they? Little critter, critters, you know, the little ones with the whiskers. <laughs> oh gosh, are you funny. Mice. It won't catch any mice at all. Now. Evolution cannot produce a biological mechanism akin to the mouse trap all at once. It would be impossible. All at once, right. Because that's exactly what evolution does, right? Everything just goes, what? Impossible for them to come at once? Yeah, I agree. It is impossible. But that's not what evolution is saying, is it? That is not true. Evolution is a slow process from simplicity to complexity. Basically, to refute um, irreducible complexity, I'll use the game Jenga. Because over time, you get the bricks lined up and you get a very simple um, structure. After that you remove all the inefficient parts that aren't needed until you get to a point where if you remove any single one of them anymore the whole thing falls apart. That's why you don't remove them do you? That is what it does for complexity. However it can evolve. For the odds, for uh, something biological mechanism like a mousetrap, to all the, have the, all the parts come together at the one time. Nobody would suggest that that is at all possible. Oh, the odds. So he's going to pull the probability card again, right? So remember, one in 500 billion, 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 billion. But here's the thing. There are biological systems analogous to the mousetrap that you cannot produce by numerous successive slight modifications because the precursor system would be missing a part and therefore it wouldn't function and there would be no reason for it to continue to exist natural selection only chooses systems that are already working and so you have to have all the parts together they all have to be in the right relationship with each other for it to work missing a part it doesn't work so you can't build it slightly over time because it wouldn't function at all until all the parts were present and if it isn't functioning at all evolution would not preserve it when we look at the mousetrap, what do we see? We see obvious signs of an intelligent designer. But what's truly amazing is in the last 50 years, as science has delved into the biological realm, we see the same thing over and over again. We see evidence for an intelligent designer. Wait, I think I know where this is going. Don't say it. Oh, you're not. 
Give an example of a biological machine. You're honestly not. Called a bacterial flagellum. Son of a bitch! Oh my fucking god. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. He said it! The bacterial flagellum. This has been debunked years ago. How, how many times are we gonna have to keep bringing this old dead argument up? Bacterial flagellum? Are you being serious? I'm... I'm too tired. I, I've seen this um, thing refuted so many times. I'm, I've got a headache. I'm, I'm not even doing this anymore. Fuck it. No. No. Just no. Link at the side. That's all. Uh, link in the sidebar. Link. I don't know where the sidebar is. Link side sidebar. Link in the side. Some bacteria have little tails on them, and this this flagellum is a motor. Is it like a motor? It's like a rotary motor that propels bacteria through fluid. Now, all of the parts of this little bacterial motor, all of the parts have to be present and fully functioning for this thing to work. How many times are we going to keep bringing this up? It's been debunked years ago. The Matsky model has proven that the bacterial flagellum is reducible. Now this little motor, it's an amazing thing. It's one one hundred thousandth of an inch long. Yeah, you like big numbers like that, don't you? But it can spin at 10,000 RPMs. It can stop in a quarter turn, and it can spin backwards at 10,000 RPM. That's cool, because you can spout 10,000 points of bullshit in one minute, and then turn around and spit out another 10,000 points of bullshit. Can you believe that? If you know anything about cars, you ever see the Honda S2000 sports car? It can only spin at 9,000 RPMs. This little thing, 100 thousandths of an inch long, 10,000 RPM, stop at a quarter turn, and backwards 10,000 RPM. Isn't that fucking amazing? Howard Berg of, Howard, of Harvard University said, it is the most sophisticated motor in the universe. Science, with all of our technology, cannot produce anything like it. He said, it is the most efficient motor anywhere. Well, genetic studies have shown that between 30 and 35 proteins are needed to make a functional flagellum, this little motor. If you eliminate one of the parts, it doesn't spin at 5,000 RPM. It doesn't spin at all. Well, it seems like we're not going to be able to escape this one. Do you want to talk about the bacterial flagellum? Okay, let's talk about the bacterial flagellum. Some of the bacterial flagellum do a function without the L ring or the P ring. In experiments with various bacteria, some of the components have been found helpful, but not absolutely essential. One third of the 497 amino acids in the flagellum have been cut out without harming its function. And Darwinists have not been able to come up with any rational explanation that would explain how this could have come about by naturalistic means. None. They have not figured it out at all. None. They just out. They can't. They don't. They don't know. No idea. They don't know how it happened. God did it. So I interviewed Dr. Behe for my book. Michael Behe's opinion? Really? Well, he's already a creationist, so therefore he's incredibly biased. And he told me this quote: "My conclusion." My conclusion. Right. We know what your conclusion is going to be. Can be summed up in a single word: design. I say that, he said, based on science. Science, all the science would agree. Also, Michael B. Has, has recently conceded that irreducible complexity can evolve. I believe that irreducibly complex systems are strong evidence of a purposeful, intentional design by an intelligent agent. That's his conclusion from the science. Wrong. His claims are based off of ignorance or lies. And why do I say ignorance? Behe was unaware when he wrote his book that the mechanisms for evolution of irreducible complexity systems have already been discussed six decades earlier by Nobel Prize winner Herman Joseph Muller and has been common knowledge in the field since then. He, be he cannot be forgiven for not doing his homework and for simply falling for the god of the gaps trap. Again, it is not from the science. Do not insult science in such a demeaning way, please. Oh. Rioni, 1989, out.